Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm sharing how to make a 3D layered mandala out of cardstock using my Cricut machine. I absolutely love how these turn out. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new to my channel. I would love to have you here and I will show you how I made this. I found this SVG off of designbundles.net. They have a ton of like 3D layered mandalas. So I picked the camera one because just being a YouTuber, um, I thought that one was really cute and I loved the flowers. So this is the SVG. I bought this. It says that it's $7 now, but when I bought it a couple days ago, it was around $4. So they must have had a sale going. So if you're interested in this SVG, you might want to watch out to see if the price lowers. And and if you click on this, it shows all the different layers on here for this SVG. Um, I can link this down below if you like this one, but they also have a ton of other mandala SVGs on here. They have a ton of them. You can also find these on Etsy too, but I'll just leave these links down below if you're looking for a mandala. I received an email after I bought it and already downloaded that and I was playing around with it so I have it uploaded in Cricut Design Space already. So I'll just insert that in here. And one thing with these mandalas, you don't want to make the design too small with whatever you're putting it on because there is a ton of intricate cuts in here that sometimes the Cricut just can't do. So I'm going to make this smaller because it pulled in really big. And you can see when you can make it smaller, there's so many intricate cuts. So you definitely don't want to cut this too small. I decided I'm going to put this in a shadow box and I bought an 11 by 14 inch shadow box. So what I'm going to do is grab a shape. If you watch my channel a lot, this is pretty much always how I size things unless I'm doing like a t-shirt or sweatshirt or something. Otherwise, I always grab a shape and make it the same size as my blank. My shadow box is 11 by 14 inches, but it does have a white border on the outside of it. So I measured that and it was 10 and a half by 13 and a half. I'm going to make this white first. Then I'm going to go up here and hit unlock. For my width, I'm going to do 13 and a half. And for my height, I'm going to do 10 and a half. Now I'm just going to right click and send this to the back. Then I'm going to bring this over and I'm just going to size this inside of this rectangle. Another thing that I just thought of, I'm using 12 by 12 cardstock, so it can't be bigger than 12 inches. And actually, it can't be bigger than 11 and a half inches, so I am going to make that my width. I still think that looks really good being 11 and a half inches. Now I'm just going to hide my square. I just want to show you so you can see how this is going to look. I'm going to ungroup it, and I am going to zoom out and show you all these layers. Here's the five different layers of the camera that the Cricut will cut out. I'm going to be using five different pink colors. Two of them are going to be glitter cardstock and three of them are just going to be regular cardstock. I chose this bottom one and this top right one for glitter because it doesn't have as many intricate lines like these. So I feel like it'll cut a little bit better. I already picked out what color cardstock I want to do for each of these. You can go up and change the color of each of these, but mine's five different shades of pink, so it was kind of hard to go up and change the colors. So instead, what I'll show you in a minute, what I'm going to do is I'm going to label my cardstock from one to five. One's going to be this bottom layer and then five will be the top layer. So that'll help me decide which cardstock matches with which layer. I hope that makes sense. If you have questions about that, um, just leave a comment and I will try to get back to you. Now that I have these sized, all five are different colors, so it'll separate it on five different mats, which is what I want it to do because I have five different color cardstock. So I'm going to go to make it. You can see it's all on each mat, but it doesn't do it in order of the layers. It's like random. So I just have to make sure that my cardstock matches with the design. So now I'm going to hit continue. I'm going to be selecting two different cut settings for these. And looking at this, it actually worked out really well for me because these first three are going to be regular cardstock and the last two are going to be the glitter cardstock. 
So the first one, I'm going to select medium cardstock and I'll keep it on that setting for the next two. Then when the Cricut's ready to cut the fourth one, I will select glitter cardstock. So I am just going to select medium cardstock. The mandala has five layered images. So here are the five colored cardstocks that I chose to use. When making mandalas, you can choose whatever colors you like. I like to do different shades of a similar color. I put the cardstock in order by what color I want, wanted for each layer. Then to make it easier, I labeled it five through one. Normally I will change the color in Cricut Design Space so that it would tell me what color material to use. But with five different shades of pink, I found this to be easier. I matched up the color cardstock with the image Cricut Design Space said it was going to cut out first. I accidentally put this on my purple mat. I meant to only use that for the glitter cardstock and it was a little difficult to remove the paper from the mat. I would recommend probably the green mat for just regular cardstock. I've used the blue mat in the past, but if you notice that the cardstock is not sticking down well or not cutting well, I would switch to the green mat. I got out my Cricut spatula tool and what I found worked the best to remove the material was to bend the mat backwards and use the spatula to remove the cardstock while bending the mat back. That worked out really well. The mat pulled up a lot of the inside pieces, but I just went through and took out whatever the mat didn't pick up. A quick tip that I have for removing leftover cardstock off your mat is use your Cricut scraper tool to scrape off the pieces. I also love my Excel scraper that I'm using here because it makes it even faster. In Cricut Design Space, it'll show the next image I'll be cutting out, and this one was number four. So I grabbed that piece of cardstock. I completely forgot to switch out my purple mat again though. I removed the cardstock the exact same way and that worked really well. Also, if I wasn't filming, I would be having the Cricut cut one layer while I weed out the other, so I would just recommend doing that. Here I'm just taking out all of the inner pieces again and I will skip past some of this so it isn't too boring to watch. Sometimes there's pieces that won't cut as well and you can just grab an X-Acto knife and cut along the edge of where the Cricut should have cut it through and that helps a lot. Also, the X-Acto knife or a weeding tool can help kind of pop out some of those pieces also. Before I moved on to the third cardstock, I decided to check my blade. When using cardstock and especially glitter cardstock, you'll want to clean off your blade. It's hard to see in the video, but it does have parts of the paper on it. What I love to do is just have a rolled up ball of aluminum foil with me, and I just take the blade, blade and just stab it into it a few times, and it'll clean it off super well. I'm moving on to my third layer. I was thinking about making a YouTube video on how to get clean cuts with the Cricut machine. With this project, there are a lot of intricate cuts and there's quite a few things you can do to get cleaner cuts with the Cricut. So let me know in the comments if that is something you would like to see. I sped this part up really fast so you don't have to slowly watch me take all of these tiny pieces out. I did have to go in with my X-Acto knife with some of these also, um, I just didn't show it on camera. As you can see here, the first three are checked off. I select medium cardstock and search for glitter cardstock, and I will use that setting for the last two layers. Now I just follow the exact same process. I did switch back to the purple mat though because this glitter paper is pretty heavy. I also forgot to mention, but I just got all of these cardstock at Michael's. I'm so glad that I chose some glitter cardstock because it is just so pretty. 
Here's all of the five layers cut out. Now I'm ready to put it together. I'm using foam mounting tape that I bought from Michaels to put these together. I like these because it'll give it some dimension. I grab the bottom two layers first, then I grab the second to last layer and turn it around, then I'll start placing the foam tape on it. I love this tape because you can just grab scissors and cut whatever size tape you want to fit on the cardstock. There's a backing that you need to take off and then it'll be sticky on both sides. You want to place it where the tape won't be seen through the cut cutout pieces. I placed it on random spots throughout the back of the cardstock. I do recommend putting it closer to the edge. As you can see for this one, I cut the foam piece smaller so it would fit in this spot. The scissors do get tape stuck to it, so I have to clean that off as I go. Once I'm happy with the amount of foam tape I have on there, I turn it around and center it over the bottom layer, then I'll just press it down. The foam tape is really sticky, so it holds it in place really well, and you don't have to just go crazy putting foam tape on the back, which would take forever. After I placed it on, I noticed there were a few spots that needed some fo more foam tape, especially around the edges, so I went back in and added a few more. Sometimes it's easier to see where you need it after placing it back on top. After looking at the side, there was one part of the flower that looked kind of flat, so I added another foam piece there. Here you can see how the first two layers are looking and how the foam tape gives it some dimension. Then I grab the next layer and add the foam tape onto the back of that in the same way. This cardstock was the most intricate one, so some of the foam tape pieces I had to cut super thin. After that's done, I turn it around and center it on top. I add in a few more foam tape again once it's on there. Now I just add the next layer. Here's how it's looking. I just love the glitter cardstock so much. For the last layer, I decided to do foam tape as well, but if it's just too thin, you can also add glue instead. Here's how it looks with all the layers on it. You can see how the foam tape brings dimension to it when you turn it on its side, but then when you look at it straight on, you can't see the tape at all. 
I am just so happy with this and I love how beautiful these mandalas turn out. Here's my 11 by 14 frame. I bought this at Michael's. It has fabric on the back. I was going to take that off and add some type of paper to the back, but I decided just to glue the mandala onto it. I'm using Sobo glue because it works well with fabric. I'm also using a paintbrush to add the glue because the top was just totally busted. Here's how it turned out. I want to hang this somewhere in my craft room. I'm also thinking about making a 3D mandala with vinyl. So let me know if you want to see that. And I hope you enjoy this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new to my channel. I would love to have you here.